So with Studio One version six, we get some really welcomed updates to our console. So there's a lot of different features and I'd highly recommend reading the release notes in detail to make sure you get access to everything that's available. I've chosen what I consider to be the highlights on my list and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. But make sure you also watch different content from Personas directly and other Studio One content creators as I might be not covering something that might be really important to you in this video. Okay, so to start off with, let's dive in. I'm going to click the wrench icon and notice at the bottom here we have channel icons. So this is something that I know a lot of people were requesting. This is something that's been available within Universal Control. So now anywhere we click from within the bottom of the channel icon, we have these different categories. We can choose something that's really specific. If this was a kick track, I could choose a kick, uh, a kick in or a kick out. Really nice just visual indication to show exactly what your track is so you don't necessarily have to look at the track names. Okay, let's go ahead and disable this view for now. Now, a really big one for people who've been asking for um, individual control over the left and right pan with respect to stereo tracks. This is something that's now available in Studio One 6. So notice, if I right click on the panning, we have pan mode, and we basically have three different modes. We have balance, which is what we've been used to in previous versions. We have the dual mode, which I believe is the new default in terms of creating new tracks, and we also have a binaural mode. Okay, now in addition to that, I'm gonna switch this back to dual. In addition to that, and I'm gonna command click to reset this, we can click, hold, and drag to narrow the stereo field and kind of bring these both panners in a little bit closer. This is a really great thing to do when you're mixing. Also, if we click, hold, and drag either the right side or if we click, hold, and drag the left side, we can change just one side of the panning over. So very, very useful. I'm gonna double click this. Notice that we have this large pop-out floating window that displays where we have the ability to do the same thing. Oh, another thing I should mention is we also can invert it by dragging past the center point, and now we've inverted the pan completely. And then we can choose between our different modes here as well. The double clicking will also work on our regular effect sends. So for example, I can double click over here, and this is giving us a pop-out window. In addition, it'll work on Q mixes. Now also, with respect to Q mixes and effect sends, I'm going to double click again. Notice this drop-down menu. We have a really, really welcome feature where we have the ability to lock pan to channel. This is something that a lot of users were, were requesting is that if they create a send or a QMix send, that they didn't want to necessarily have to go in and individually adjust the panning. Okay, what do I mean by this? Let's take a look at this track over here. So here we have a vocal, and for sake of demonstration, I have it panned just off to the right a little bit. Now, by default, in previous versions of Studio One, I'm going to deselect this, we had a really small panner, and it's kind of hard to see, but we could adjust the panning of, for example, our Q mixes, and also we could do the same for, let's deselect lock pan to channel, we could do the same for this. So I'm adjusting the pan of this send. Now this is good for when you wanted to, for example, invert the panning on a reverb send, but in general, I think it's a really great starting point is to have everything just locked to whatever is happening on the channel. So this is something that we can now do. And of course, like I mentioned, double clicking any of these will bring out a pop-up fader that gives us the ability to access these controls. And then if I wanted to unlink or unlock the pan to channel on, for example, a Q-mix, then this is something I could do like this. And it's a little bit easier to make these adjustments in the pop-up slider. Now, with respect to our effects returns. This one, it's so simple, but it's gonna be very welcomed again by a lot of different people. Here I have my lead vocal tracks, and on these lead vocal tracks, they're sent to a delay, and they're also sent to a reverb. What is one thing that we love to do in mixing, specifically when we're working with delays? We love to send our delay to the same reverb that the actual vocal is being sent to. Previous versions of Studio One, if we created an effects channel, we didn't have a send from that effects channel. As you can see, these are both effects returns. They're not bus channels. And as you can see over here, I have the ability to send my delay now to my reverb. And this is directly from within effects return. No longer need to use the workaround of using a bus channel in place. While we're talking about sends, I want to talk about a really cool feature that they've added called Fader Flip. What this basically does is it allows you to take any send, whether that's a send for effects returns or bus channels or a QMix send, 
And by one click right over here, I'm gonna right click, we have the ability to flip faders to H delay stereo. So I'm going to right click H delay and let's flip faders to H delay. Notice now that we have these green fader icons. And as you can see also, we have this green glow that's happening around the different sends. Now, if I was to change this, if I wanted to change this to the fader flip bean for the reverb, I could simply do it by right clicking over here and flip faders to vintage reverb. But there's actually a more simple way, which is kind of like a macro way of approaching this, is that directly from within this icon over here, which activates this feature, we have this drop down menu. And this will give us all the different choices that we have available. So at any given point, I can flip to, for example, H delay, or I can flip to Valhalla verb. Another thing that's available as a preference is let's say we're talking about the sends and we're talking about H delay, and I'm only using H delay on three different channels. So in the bottom here, we have the option to enable hide unassigned faders. And what this will do is for any fader flip that we do, it's basically going to hide any channels that aren't using that send. So in the case of this one over here, or if I take a look at Vox Q, anything that I take a look at and anything that I adjust, it's basically only, only going to give me that one particular channel in my view. Now, I think this is really useful for basic effect sense, definitely, but where this really comes into play for me, uh, let's deselect this option. Where this really comes into play for me is when we talk about Q mixes. Now, the reason I say this is because Q mixes are they're definitely necessary when you're working with people who want customized mixes. And I really like the way that Studio One handles Q-mixes. That being said, if I wanted to make an adjustment to a Q-mix, if somebody said, oh, I want all of these tracks to be brought down, I would, previous to this feature, I would actually have to select all these tracks and I would have to make an adjustment to these. And in some cases they wanted it deactivated or they didn't want to hear one or they wanted to hear something louder. It's quite a lot to work with, especially if you're managing multiple Q mixes. The other thing is, at any given point in time, you need to make sure that your console view is large enough so that you can see all of your Q mixes. But with this feature, it really doesn't matter anymore because I could be in a small console view. And if I wanted to very quickly make an adjustment to my Q mix, I had an artist in the booth and they said, hey, can you turn down those pianos or those guitars? I could say, no problem. I just have to make sure that I choose Vox Q. And now my main console that I'm looking at without looking at the sends is a representation of the QMix. And if I wanted to activate or deactivate the QMix per track, that's something that I can do. I could make all of these adjustments to whatever the artist needed. And then if I wanted to simplify this even further, I could hide unassigned faders if, if certain faders weren't assigned to the QMix. It's just a really, really quick and easy way to be able to work. So these features, especially the fader flip, very, very useful and two thumbs up for me. Last but not least, I wanna talk about one more option that they've added in terms of giving us some visibility options and filtering tracks based upon what we need to do when we're mixing. So let's hop over to Studio One 5 for a really quick moment. In Studio One 5, we have our track filters. And as you know, this allows you to filter out different elements and then we can basically clear this. That's really, really useful. But in some cases, especially when you're mixing, let's say that you have five different tracks that are soloed against each other. And you wanted to simplify your view just for a moment. Maybe you have a hundred track mixing session that you're working with. I'm going to just randomly choose a couple different tracks to solo. Okay. Let's say that I only wanted to see these. I didn't need to see anything else because these are the ones that are soloed. We have an option over here to show soloed channels. I'm going to click this and notice what this does to my mixer view or my console view. It now filters everything out to only what's been soloed. At any given point in time, I can undo this visibility change and this will return me back to my previous view. This will also work with, for example, mutes. If I wanted to take a look at channels that were muted, I have another option over here, show muted channels. Now it's just filtered that out. And of course we can undo the visibility change. If I wanted to see all of my channels, I can show all channels. Now there's some channels in here that I've disabled on purpose. Okay, I wanna select these ones. I don't need to see these because these have been disabled. So one thing that I could do is I could right click and then I could hide my disabled channels. This brings me back to a view of what I need to see and only what I need to see that's relevant. Also worth mentioning, these options over here, so for example, show soloed channels. If you go up to keyboard shortcuts and we go show solo channels. So notice these are also available in our keyboard shortcut. So we can assign custom key commands to these. If we find that these are commands that are very useful and we are using them a lot, then that's definitely something that we can do. 
So a lot of improvements across the board on our console, the fader flip options, the ability to lock our pan when working with Q-mixes and buses so that anything that's sent out immediately locks or mirrors the exact same panning as the source tracks that they're coming from. Definitely a useful feature. Having a send on effects returns, another useful feature. Just across the board, I think this is going to make mixing much more pleasurable. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.